The NCAA has finally changed its rules and is now allowing college athletes to profit off of their NIL, which is short for name, image, and likeness. You might be thinking, why is this important? What does this mean? How can I take advantage of this? Well, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know right now. My name is Victoria Garrick. I'm a former USC volleyball player turned full-time social media influencer, content creator, podcaster, public speaker. I leveraged my experiences as a college athlete to create a platform that now employs me full-time. I, of course, had to wait until after I graduated to take advantage of that, but you can start doing this now. That said, I know a lot about this topic, so let's dive in. First of all, let's understand what name, image, and likeness really mean. Using myself as an example, my name is Victoria Garrick. My image is pictures of me and my likeness is just things that resemble me, represent me, etc. So name, image, and likeness when grouped together is just essentially your persona. It's your celebrity. It's who you are. And this new rule will allow college athletes to profit off of who they are. It is allowing them to accept money and benefits for being college athletes. Important note, this does not mean college athletes are being paid to play. Paid to play is another big debate going on right now. This is not that. Paid to play would mean schools or boosters would be able to write checks and give those to the athletes for playing the sport. That is still not allowed, and that's a whole other video. So to be clear, the NIL rule change just means that college athletes can leverage, monetize, and profit off of being college athletes. Now you're probably thinking, why couldn't they do that before? Great question. The NCAA used to prohibit college athletes from accepting any outside money. The intention was to protect amateurism, amateur sports, because college athletes aren't professionals yet. The NCAA thought scholarships and stipend money were enough. So they took away our right to our name, image, and likeness. For example, when I was a college athlete, and these were the rules, I could not accept anything if it had any relation to me being a college athlete. I couldn't accept a free ice cream from a local shop congratulating my teammates and I on the win. I couldn't monetize my own YouTube channel that I put hours into and had millions of views, was making zero dollars. I couldn't accept free gear or gifts from brands who wanted to send them to me. I just couldn't accept anything that involved being a college athlete. And this went for all college athletes. Remember Caitlin Ohashi, who had that incredible perfect 10 routine from UCLA? She went viral overnight, got hundreds of thousands of followers. She couldn't monetize that in any way. She couldn't accept any deal. She couldn't even accept a free power bar. And if an athlete did accept anything like that, you could risk losing your eligibility. Now look, I know the NCAA's intention was to keep an even playing field across all the divisions, different sports, teams, etc. But that was absolute BS because it was taking away a basic human right from college athletes and that's the right to our own name, image, and likeness. Like why were college musicians on scholarship able to accept payment for concerts or gigs on the weekends? And why were engineers on scholarships able to accept investment money for companies they started based around who they were? But college athletes on scholarship weren't even allowed to accept a free sandwich? <clears throat> Once again, BS. But hey, we're here now, this is the situation, and I'm gonna tell you how you can take advantage of that, leverage that, and use it to benefit you. To give you an example, let's use some current college athletes who can take advantage of this in the coming fall season. Brooke Botkin, former teammate, All-American USC volleyball player, love her, and Keaton Slovis, USC quarterback. Fight on, baby. Gonna use Trojan examples. The two of these athletes can now do the following. They can sell their own merchandise with their names and numbers on it. They can sell autographed balls and autographed shirts. They can get on Cameo and charge fans for shout out videos. They can accept sponsorships for paid posts on Instagram and social media. They can accept free stuff from brands. They can charge for private lessons and run summer camps in their hometowns with younger athletes. They could even start YouTube channels and monetize them. Like this one. Please don't skip the ads. Now, yes, I know there are some advantages to players at Power 5 schools who are household names. I get it. They're gonna be receiving large, insane deals. And this name, image, and likeness thing is really gonna benefit those players. But I really strongly believe that there are still so many benefits to this and so many opportunities 
for all athletes across all the divisions, regardless of if you are a star player or not. So keep watching. We're almost there. I'm going to explain it. But first, housekeeping things. There are a lot of questions and little details surrounding this rule, so I want to kind of quickly answer the most important ones right now. These are questions you guys submitted through Instagram. If you don't follow me there, definitely do it. Hit me up, Victoria Garrick. But anyways, here are the answers. Can college athletes now hire professional help, like lawyers, agents, and accountants? Yes. Yes, they can. Can boosters pay athletes directly? A booster can still not pay an athlete for their athletic performance. Like they can't just send them a Venmo deposit for 10 grand because they scored the winning touchdown. That's still illegal. But boosters can still buy their merchandise, supply them with gifts. Honestly, this is where there's some gray area if you ask me, and this is probably where problems may arise. But I'm sure there'll be specific state laws on this soon. What divisions does this affect? All three NCAA divisions. Yay! What about international college athletes? So there's a pickle here, sadly. Prior to this NIL rule change, there were US visa laws that prohibit international students from working more than 20 hours a month. So unfortunately, international students can't leverage this new rule to the fullest, but hopefully the visa laws change soon to be updated because of this new NIL change. Can athletes just endorse anything they want? No, certain things still remain off limits like alcohol, drugs, and then I'm sure there will be things that certain schools prohibit their athletes from endorsing. Can an athlete accept a sponsorship from a brand that their school does not represent? Okay, so I looked into this and state laws and schools will not allow their athletes to enter into any contracts that interfere with the school's already established athletic department contracts. So like at USC, we were Nike. So if I was a college athlete and I got like an exclusive Adidas offer, I would still have to wear Nike in my games. Therefore, I couldn't accept the Adidas offer. I wonder how brands will get around this. They probably just won't be exclusive. Who knows? And one last thing that I wanted to address, there's a lot of legal jargon still that's high level and difficult to understand. In general, I think the most important thing to know is that as of right now, certain states have laws around this, others don't, which means the schools have to create the guidelines for their athletes. I think the NCAA does want Congress to pass some overarching guidelines, rules that govern all, but as of right now, it is individual. And actually, here's a great quote from ESPN. Any school located in a state without a law going into effect is responsible for making and enforcing its own NIL policy. Okay, you almost know everything. Sit tight, we're almost done. Let's help the small fish. For those athletes who are at smaller divisions, smaller schools, like I said, not the star player, don't have tons of fans, program doesn't have a ton of money, you're probably wondering, you know, how does this benefit me? Look, you're probably not gonna get the six-figure contract that the Alabama football player is gonna get, but I strongly believe that you can still start building your personal brand and monetize it. Think local. You can go back to your hometown and give private lessons. You can host a volleyball camp for kids in your area that have aspirations at playing at the same level as you. You could strike up a deal with a local ice cream or sandwich shop and get comped a few free meals here and there, which makes a huge difference in the long run. And in general, Anyone, it doesn't matter if you are a star player or not, or you go to a power five school or you don't, can start a social media account and try to grow their following. And if anyone grows a following, brands don't care if you are a starter or you play at a power five school. They care if you have an audience that you can sell into that cares about what you say. And there's a lot of people in this world who have created those accounts without being elite athletes. And that's the beautiful thing about this now is you can do this and you couldn't do this before. You're probably thinking, okay, Victoria, I have like zero followers. How do I grow on social media? The biggest piece of advice I could give anyone right now trying to grow on social media is, are you ready? Drum roll, please. Listen up, get ready. Get on TikTok. Yep, get on TikTok. And for those of you that just rolled your eyes and were like, oh, what is TikTok has the most favorable algorithm out of all the platforms, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, podcasting, forget it. TikTok, you have the potential to reach hundreds of thousands of people every time you post. That's the beauty of the algorithm. And then if you gain an audience on TikTok, you can bring them to Instagram, bring them to your podcast. That was really helpful for me. I got on TikTok about one year ago. I've grown my following to over 900,000 people. And those people have come to Instagram, come to the podcast. TikTok drastically changed the game for me and it helped 
helped me reach and connect with an entirely new audience that might have never found me and who I would have never found on other platforms. And now you're probably thinking, well, what do I post on TikTok? I'm not a dancer, I'm not a singer. That's okay. You can post literally anything. You can do informational videos, you can do memes about your sport, quick tutorials, tell jokes, you could sing, you could dance. Just get on the app, start consuming content, and see what excites you. But if you're trying to go a following in any department, TikTok. And then once you make the TikTok, Download it and post it as a reel on your Instagram. There you go. That's two pieces of content. And then of course there's side hustles. Like if you have a jewelry business, if you're a DJ and you like to put your music on SoundCloud, you can do that now and attach it to your name and monetize. So yes, I hear you. You might not get the benefits that the 1% of top college athletes will be getting, but you can still make a few hundred, a few thousand bucks. And that makes a big difference in the long run. Two very last things I want you to know before you leave. All my athletes watching this, I recommend you please start a new Gmail account, a new email account unrelated to your school account where you do all of your communications, you hook up your YouTube channel, you hook up your Instagram, whatever it is, start a new email account that belongs to you and use that when you are beginning all of this. Take it from me, I started everything through my at usc.edu account and my YouTube channel, I had to switch it over, all the emails and I had to switch it over. So please start a separate email account that you do everything through. Thank me later. And lastly, I know this can seem overwhelming. You're probably thinking, uh, when do I have time to do any of this? You're like, I'm a student athlete. I got full-time class, full-time sport, a social life I'm barely hanging on to, family life, my own mental health. I get it. It's a lot. It can seem really overwhelming. I actually gave a TED talk about it. So if you're interested in the athlete mental health conversation, check it out. I say this to just remind you to please be mindful of what you can manage, what you can take on. And honestly, you don't have to do any of this, but the most important thing is you can if you want to. And that's why this is such a breakthrough for college athletes everywhere. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, I would so, so, so appreciate it if you would please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my other videos that might interest you, like the pros and cons of being a student athlete, 10 things I wish I knew before I was a college athlete, and so much more. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter if you want to stay connected. I look forward to all of you getting your bread, you know? Wishing the best for you. Hope this was helpful. Send this to a teammate if you think they would enjoy. Thanks so much for watching, and I will be back next Thursday with a brand new video. Bye.